Welcome to all who have joined us uh, for this uh, 15 minutes or so as we present the, the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's good to have your company and we trust that what we read and think about will be a blessing to all. My name is Roland Pickering and this uh, message goes out in association with the Limavady Gospel Hall. Now just before uh, I read and speak, we'll ask the Lord to bless our time. Shall we pray? Our God and Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, we bow before thee and pray for thy help just now as we think on things that are spiritual and eternal, that thy word by the Spirit of God may search hearts and that there might be a response in the hearts of some to receive Christ and find him as their very own Savior. We ask it in thy name. Amen. I want to read with you in the book of the Revelation in chapter 5, and we'll read together uh, verse number 9. It says, And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. For thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation, and hast made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. Now that's all we read with the Lord's blessing. This is the third of the three uh, messages uh, that we have been doing. And uh, the very first one was the words of the Lord Jesus, it is finished. And that really is the message you could say from the tree, the words of Christ. And then uh, last uh, week, Easter Sunday, we thought of the words of the angel when he said he is risen. And that tells us of the message from the tomb that the Lord Jesus is alive and alive today. What we have read here, you could say, is a message from the throne. The words, thou art worthy. You see, the Lord Jesus, because of his death on the cross, his resurrection from amongst the dead, and his place now seated at God's right hand, that he is worthy and worthy alone. Chapters 4 and 5 of the book of the Revelation are scenes in heaven that are yet future. And if you were to read these two chapters, you would discover that the throne of God is mentioned many times. In fact, in chapter 4, you'll read about the throne 12 times. In chapter 5, you'll read again of the throne of God five times. So you couldn't but see, reading this even in a casual manner, the fact of the throne of God. That seat of authority where God is, where God has ever been. And when we think of this, song that is sung. It's a scene of the saints, of the saved of earth, now in heaven, around that rainbow circle throne, and they sing this song. You know, heaven is a place of many things, but I'm glad that heaven is a place of song. And it tells us here, and they sung a new song. So first of all, there is harmony. They were all in one chorus. 
There was no discordant note, no dull note, no defeated note. This was a song of harmony when millions upon millions of voices of souls that have been redeemed blend together and rise in praise to the one who is on the throne, to the Lord Jesus, the one who is worthy. It's a good thing just to ask ourselves the question, will you be part of that great song? Will you be amongst that great number in that coming day that will sing the song, the song of redemption, as we'll see? You know, it's a great thing to have heaven and glory before you. The fact is this, that we are all passing through. And the old hymn says that this world is not our home. And the fact is this, that we're going to another world. And it is something of the utmost importance to know where you're going. And the Bible makes it clear that you can and that you can know that one day you'll be in heaven in the glory with the multitudes on high to sing this song. The tragedy is if you're not there, and what a solemn thought that is, because to be outside of heaven is to find yourself beneath the judgment for all eternity. You know, it's our prayer and desire that you would be amongst this great throng that will sing that day what a crescendo, what a chorus that will rise in the courts of heaven. I'm glad you know that on that day I'll be there, not because I deserve to be, but because of the grace of God and the saving power of the Lord Jesus. You can be there as well. So we've got a song here, and there's harmony. He said, they sung a new song saying, Thou art worthy. It tells us of one who is worthy. The Lord Jesus is the worthy one. In chapter 4, you will read that he is worthy because of creation. It says, Thou art worthy for thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they were and are created. But here in chapter 5, he is worthy because of Calvary. You know, the Lord Jesus, who brought creation into being, this world, on the cross, he did an even greater work. He brought salvation, redemption, within the reach of all men. And so it says they sung a new song saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals. And then it says, For thou wast slain. This song reminds us of Calvary, where the Lord Jesus died for you and me. And of course, that's central and fundamental to the message of the gospel. It's a great thing to be able to tell men and women of a Savior that loved them and died for them upon the cross at Calvary. For all eternity, the cross will never be forgotten. The song that will rise will remind every heart of a Savior who suffered, who was willing to pay the mighty debt of sin. And so it says, Thou wast slain. That brings us to Calvary. And then it says, 
and hast redeemed us. That reminds us of liberty, of being set free. The word redeemed has the thought of being delivered from bondage and set free because a price has been paid. Isn't it a great thing just to know that you are free from the power of darkness, from Satan's domain, and that you've been brought into the light and liberty of the gospel of Christ. In a world in which many people sometimes speak of freedom, well, this is the greatest freedom of all. To be delivered, the Bible says, to have delivered us from the power of darkness and have translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. What a wonderful message. Well, it says, thou art worthy for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood. Here is the remedy. That is the very crux of the matter, the very heart of it, redeemed by his blood. You see, the Bible tells us that the blood of Christ, it is atoning blood. It is the blood that maketh an atonement for the soul. It speaks of it as cleansing blood, the blood of Jesus Christ. God's Son cleanses us from all sin. You know, this great message of the gospel, it brings before us a, a freedom, a deliverance, but at a great cost, the remedy of the precious blood of Christ. You see, Peter speaks about how valuable it is and he says that we are redeemed, not with corruptible things, as silver and gold, but he says, with the precious blood of Christ. I wonder as you listen to this little message, does this resound as it were in your heart? Does this resonate in your soul that you can say, I know, I've been redeemed, I've been delivered, and I've been saved, and it's only because of the blood of Christ, the death of Christ, there at Calvary. You know, today, if your heart, your soul, would really be opened to the Lord Jesus, what a change it would make in your life. And so the song says, Thou hast redeemed us by thy blood out of every kindred and people and nation and tongue. The variety of people that sing this song. Isn't it a great thing that they will come from every part of this planet, from the furthest islands of the sea, from the greatest continents of earth, multitude who have been drawn to Christ, who have realized that in their sins, if they die, they will really perish eternally, but appreciate that there was a Savior who died for them, who gave us life, who shed his blood, who paid the mighty debt of sin. Is there a heart today that would be opened to the claims of Christ? The little hymn says, is there a heart that is waiting, longing for pardon today? Hear the glad message proclaiming Jesus is passing this way. What a song. But as I close, you know, it tells us that 
those who sing the song that they come from every part, from every nation, from every clime, from every kindred, from every tongue under heaven. And then it says, and has made us unto our God kings and priests. What dignity, a kingdom of priests. And we shall reign on the earth. What victory. You know, I'll tell you this. To know the Lord Jesus as your Savior and have your sins all forgiven and be redeemed with that most precious blood of Christ, you will be in the glory to sing his praise, to extol and exalt his name in a way that we could never do here on earth. But what a day that will be when there will be that song that will rise, that will resound through the corridors of heaven. Redeemed, redeemed. What a thought. May you today enter in to this greatest of all blessings. Receive Christ. Receive him now. And then you will be part of that great multitude that will rise in song and in praise to him who is worthy. Shall we pray? Our God and Father, we ask thy blessing upon thy word. We thank thee for these tremendous words, this great song that will be sung in a coming day. We long that there will be those listening, viewing, even now, who would make sure that they'll be there when the saints go marching in. We ask thy blessing in thy precious name. Amen. Thank you again for listening, and God bless you all. Thank you.